Hello my class 10 students. This is the solution of the ICC math sample paper 4, section A. This is the paper of one of the reputed schools of ICSE. As you know, section A is made up of question 1, which is of 10 marks, which will be all MCQs like so. And the section B is going to be of 5 questions, question 2 to question 6, out of which you have to choose 3 questions and you have a choice for that. Alright, so with semester 2 exam of maths just round the corner, watch this video to understand how to write your paper, how to think during the examination. You could pause the video for a question, solve it and then check your solution with mine, okay? And for more help in your PCA marks, consider subscribing to this channel. So, shall we begin? Our section 1, choose the correct answers to the questions from the given options and we have to write correct answers only, alright? So we have the first one, point P A comma B is reflected in X axis to P dash which is 2 comma minus 5 and the coordinate of P is and we have these choices. Now let us see how we solve it. So if we have P A comma B with reflection in X axis becomes a comma minus b but your p dash which is the reflection is 2 comma minus 5 then your a is 2 and your b is 5 correct and so the option will be a so we write it like so let's look at our options the option is option a okay let us look at the second one in the given figure a t is the tangent to the circle and find AT if BC is 12 and CT is 4. So let us just show it in our answer sheet. Here we have your CT is 4 and your CB is 12. And we have this AT which is the tangent. So tangent square is equal to the product of the chords. So TC into TB. So our AT will be under root of TC means 4. Can you see this 4? And TB is 12 plus 4, this full thing, 16. And so you will get the square root of this 2, square root of 16, 4. So it will be 8 centimeters. Let's look at our options. So the option is B and we write here B. Now did you see how you present the work? These are the answers. So it's easier for your examiner to just give your marks like this. And this working is there for you to check back if you have made any error or not. Okay, let us come to the third question. The rectangular paper is folded into a cylinder. The length and breadth of the paper is L and B respectively. Which of the following represents the curved surface area? And these are the options. Let us draw the diagram for that. So you can see the rectangular paper and this is L and this is B. So now, if we were to roll this paper, whichever way, either this way, or even if we had to do it this way, the rolling of the paper, remember, if you cut it open, it will be a rectangular, right? So you will see that this full thing is going to be length, which is actually 2 pi r will be your length. And this height becomes breadth. In this case, this becomes your breadth, which will be 2 pi r if I roll it up this way. Okay, so either case it will be this length multiplied by this breadth or this length multiplied by this breadth. Okay, so let us look at our choices. The choices are, can you see over here, L into B and that is our B. So this is our B and we get one more mark for this. Let's look at our fourth question. If P minus 1 comma 1 is the midpoint of the line segment joining A and B, the coordinates are given, find the value of B. So the value of B, these are the choices 1, minus 1, 2 and 0. Now if it's a midpoint, then you will have x1 plus x2 upon 2 comma y1 plus y2 upon 2. That will be the formula. Let's see how we write it down. We have written A and B and the coordinates here. Now, we are interested in value of B, which means we need to look at this. So, we will look at the Y coordinate, which is 1 here. 
and that will be equal to this plus this upon two. Solve it and you get b equal to minus one. Now minus one, which is the option? Minus one, that is b. So we will write here b and that gives us a one more mark and we move on to fifth subpart. If tan a is equal to cot b, then which of these is true? Now let us write down first so that we can start thinking. If tan a is equal to cot b, then we know that our tan a is equal to cot of 90 degrees minus a, correct? So cot b is equal to cot of this. So we will have b equal to 90 minus a. Bring this a this side, it becomes a plus b equal to 90 degrees. Now which option is that? Can you see this one here? That is C. So option here is C and that gives us one more mark. The sixth subpart. The class intervals are given and the frequency is given and the median class of the following data is. The median class is the class where the median is found. So we have the choices here like this. A, B, C and the D is missing. Is the D given? No. A, B and C only is given. D must be on the other page. So let us start thinking. Let us just quickly write this down. And then we write this is the frequency over here. This is the frequency. But for the median, we need cumulative frequency. So 8 will be copied here. Then 8 plus 15 gives 23. 23 plus 12, 35. 35 plus 20, 55. 55 plus 9 is 64. So median is going to be equal to n upon 2th term means 32nd term plus 33rd term upon 2. Okay. Now 32nd and 33rd term everything is here because till 35 terms we have the class 20 to 30. So you will see that this value will be lying between 20 to 30. So that becomes our median class. Our median class is 20 to 30. Now let's look at our options. Here we have 20 to 30. This is our option C. So we will write here C and that is our one more mark. Let us look at our seventh. The lines 4x minus 3y plus 12 equal to 0 needs x axis at a. So our a is going to lie on x axis. It will be x comma 0. And coordinates of a will be found by substituting x comma 0 in this. So let's see how we write it. This is our equation. Our a is going to be on x axis. So it becomes x comma 0. So we'll write 4x as 4x. And 3y becomes 3 into 0 means 0 and plus 12. Okay. So 4x is equal to minus 12. That gives us x equal to minus 3. Now where is minus 3? I have written over your option A. But let us look in the question. Can you see over here? Minus 3 comma 0. This is option A. So this is our option A. And that is one more mark here. And that is our answer. Let us come to the 8th subpart. The radius and the height of a cone are 6 cm and 8 cm respectively. The CSA curved surface area is, and we have to find it, take pi as 3.14. Now radius is 6 cm, height is 8 cm. Draw a small diagram to help you understand it. Right, this is 6 cm, this is 8 cm, this is our 90 degrees. Using Pythagoras theorem, you will have this will be uh, the slant length that will be 64 plus 36 that's 100 and root of that will be 10. So slant height is 10 by Pytho theorem and CSA is going to be pi RL. What is pi? We have to take 3.14. I've written 314 upon 100 and radius is 6 and the slant height is 10. So 110 gets cancelled. 6 multiplied by 314. You multiply, divide by 10 and 188.4 centimeters square. And let us see where is our option 188.4. Can you see this? So we write here option C and that is again 
one more mark for us. The ninth one is pretty simple here. In the given histogram, the modal class. The modal class means the one class where the mode is situated. Mode means highest frequency. Can you see this tallest rectangle? How much it is? 40. Correct? Now 40 and what is the class interval? Isn't it 10 to 15? So where is 10 to 15? Here it is 10 to 15. So we'll write that is C and we got that one also right and now we come to the last one of section 2. The probability of getting a multiple of 2 in a throw of an unbiased die is now multiple of 2 means it will be 2, 4 and 6, correct? So it will be 2, 4, 6 that is our 3 and total will be 6 outcomes. So it will be 3 upon 6 means it will be half. Which one is that? It will be this half. Let us see how we write it. So you will see favorable is 2, 4, 6 and probability of the event is 3 upon 6 that is half. So that is our C and that is our last one. So for total of, for section A, we have got 10 on 10. Check it out for you how much it is and write it in the comment how much you have scored. Okay, section B. Pause the video for a question, solve it and then check your solution with mine. Okay, there are five questions in all and you have to attempt only three. We have question number two. I will be solving question 2, 5 and 6. Okay. You can solve question 3 and 4 on your own. But for this paper, I am solving question 2, 5 and 6. Okay. Let's look at our question 2 of section B. First one. The slope of the line joining P, 12, K and Q, 1 minus 3 K, 3 is half. Find the value of K. And the midpoint of PQ using the value K found in A part. So we'll first draw the representative diagram. We'll have a representative diagram of PQ line like this. We write the coordinates and the slope is given as half and we have to find the value of K. Now slope, what is the formula? Isn't it y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1? So this P we'll call as x1 comma y1 and this Q We'll write the coordinates and we'll say this is x2 comma y2. All right. Substitute half that is the slope this value that is there will be given as y2 minus y1 means this 3 minus this 3 upon x2 minus x1 means this x minus this. Okay. So let's simplify this. This is 3 minus k and this is minus 11. Now cross multiply, you will have minus 3k minus 11 and then you multiply by 2, this becomes 6 minus 2k. Alright, let us take all k's one side. So this minus 3k goes that side, it becomes plus 3k and this 6 comes this side, it becomes minus 6. So minus 11 minus 6, that is minus 17 and 3k minus 2k is k. So k comes out to be minus 17 and that is our answer 1. So in your marks, for this you'll get that one mark and now we have to find the value of P and Q. Now P is 12, 17 because it is 12, K and here for this Q we are going to take 1 minus 3 K that is 1 minus 3 into bracket K means minus 17 and then that comma 3 that is your y coordinate here. Now this you will simplify. This will become 1 plus 17, 3 is 51, comma 3. And that is 51 plus 2, that is 52, comma 3. That is our coordinate of Q. Alright. Now we have to find the midpoint of PQ. So midpoint formula, you already know. It is x1 plus x2 upon 2, comma y1 plus y2 upon 2. And just substitute. x1 is 12. And x2 is 52, that upon 2, and y1 is minus 17, and y2 is 3. Okay, so that will give us here you add 64 upon 2, and here it becomes minus 14 upon 2. This will give us 32, this will give us minus 7, and this becomes your second mark. So this is a two mark question. Let us come to question two, second part. 
from the set of 17 cards numbered 1, 2, 3 up to 17, one card is drawn at random. What is the probability that the number on the drawn card will be the multiple of 3 or 7? So we have to first write the sample space. Let's see how we write it. So here we have written the sample space. Now you can write this in brace brackets. Remember, if the brackets are not there, your marks will be missing. Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you can write your dot, dot, dot till 17. Don't have to write all the numbers. And the favorable outcomes will be multiples of 3. So we have 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. And multiples of 7 also will be included in that. Okay, so totally we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 outcomes. So the probability of multiple of 3 or 7 will be number of favorable outcomes upon total number of outcomes. Favorable outcomes at as we counted, it is 7 and the total is 17. So 7 upon 17 and that is our answer. So we have one mark here, one mark here. That's how we get our two marks. Let us look at question two, third part. This will be for three marks. We have PQRS. This is a cyclic quad. RT is the tangent and PQR is 80 degrees, that is angle PQR here and SRT, SRT, this is 50 degrees here and we have to find the values of A, B and C. So we have A here, B here, C here. Let's draw the diagram. So in the diagram we have written 80 degrees here, this is 50 degrees here and this is your A, B and C. We write what is given. PQRS is a cyclic quadrilateral and RT is the tangent and we have to find A, B, C just as it is given in the question. In our solution, we'll write statements and reasons. Now, angle A, if you see over here, this is 50 degrees. This is angle between the tangent and the chord at the point of contact. So, we take these two endpoints and we go this way to see this angle subtended, which is A. This will be equal to 50. So we write angle A equal to angle SRT because of the alternate segment theorem. So we got our first answer. That's our answer 1. Then in this cyclic quadrilateral, this AT and this B can be connected. They are the opposite angles of the cyclic quadrilateral, yes. So we have B equal to 180 minus AT, that is 100 because opposite angles of cyclic quadrilaterals are supplementary and that is our answer to and that is our second mark. Now we have to find C. We already know what is A. A is 50 degrees. We already know what is B. That is 100 degrees. So if we look at this triangle over here, A plus B plus C will be 180 degrees as angles of the triangle are supplementary. And then we substitute the values and plus this C is equal to 180 degrees. So C will be equal to, take this 150 that side, it will be equal to 30 degrees, the value of C. And that is our answer 3 and that is our third mark. So that is how we got our three full marks for this question. Let's go to the fourth subpart. On a level plane, the shadow of the standing tower is found to be 40 meters longer when the sun's altitude is 30 degrees than when it is 60 degrees. Find the height of the tower. So we have this as the tower and when the altitude is 30 degrees, the shadow is 40 meters longer. So let's draw the diagram here. Now this is our tower. This is your 40 meters. The shadow is going to be longer when the altitude is 30 degrees than with 60 degrees. And we have this 90 degrees. Now let us look at our first, this small triangle here. In this triangle, right triangle DAB, tan of 60 will be this upon this. So we just write that. Tan 60 is root 3. You must know these values by heart. Okay. Then AD is as it is. We have to find it. And AB we do not know. Now AB is equal to AD upon root 3. Now sometimes you could just stop at this point and go to the second triangle. That is why I have drawn the column here. 
So in right triangle DAC, you can see this DAC, we will have tan of 30 degrees will be AD upon AC. So this is written just the same. Now, what is AC? It is AB plus BC. Can you see that? AB plus BC and BC is 40. Tan of 30 degrees is 1 upon root 3. So if you cross multiply, you will have AB plus 40 is equal to root 3 into AB. Now we have to find the height of the tau. That is AD is to be found out. So we need AD over here. Do I need AB here? No, because if I have to find AD, I must have AD here. So we come here and take this AB this side, bring this root 3 this side, and we'll have AD upon root 3, which is the value of AB. We will substitute that value here. Now, in our equation, there is only AD. So we'll take all the terms with AD one side, and we will have this quantity going that side. So root 3 AD minus AD upon root 3, which is what I've written here. And 40 will remain here, which I've written here, this side. Okay. Now, if you take LCM root 3, root 3 into root 3 gives us 3. So 3 AD minus AD will be 40. And that will give us 2 AD is equal to 40 root 3. Now, AD will be equal to 2 goes that side. It will divide here. So 2 1s and 2 20s. So it becomes 20 root 3. Substitute the value of root 3. And that will give us 34.62 meters. And that is our answer. So to get this, you will have one mark. To get this, you will have one mark. And to get this, it will be one mark. Okay? That's how you'll get your three marks full for this question. As I told you, after question two, I will go for question five. But you can have a look at your question three. That is part one and two. This is part three and four of question three. This is question four. And then we come to question five. We have a circle here and TS and ZR. TS and ZR. They are two parts of the circle with center O. They intersect each other in X at X when produced. So they have been produced and this is our X. Angle POR. POR is 130. RXT. RXT. That is 25 degrees. And XTO, we have XTO, this is 52 degrees and we have to find out ZTO, ZTO. Let's look at our solution. So this is our diagram exactly the same way as we have in the question. We have drawn that. Now we write what is given. The diagram has angles as given in the question. And we have to find angle ZTO. ZTO, which are marked with this X. All right. Now, what is known? This 130 is known. What is 130? Isn't it angle at the center? So, from these two endpoints, if you go up this way, we will get this angle, which will be angle at the circumference. This is going to be 65. So, we write it angle TZR will be half of TOR, angle at circumference is equal to half angle at the center. And we write half into 130, then two ones and two goes 65 times. So 65 degrees is this value. Now slowly we have to come to this. So you will see that in this triangle, can you see this triangle, this one? We know 65, we know 25 and we can find this out. Now, can you see this angle is made of x and 52? So, we will write just that in triangle ZTX. These three angles equal to 180 degrees because angles of the triangle are supplementary. And then we substitute TZR is 65. ZTX is x plus 52. That is this one. And ZTX, this one is 25. And that's equal to 180. So we have these values already given. We have it in statement 1 for substituting here. Now if you add this, you will get 90. 90 plus 52 is 142. So x plus 142 is equal to 180 degrees. That will give us x. What is x? It is ZTO. 
So angle ZPO that is X will be equal to take this 142 that side and that will give us 38 degrees as our answer. So to get this 65, you will be getting one mark and to get this relationship and this, that will give you your second mark. So this will be your two mark question. Now let us come to the second one. The second part of question five is a trigo identity. We have to prove this is equal to tan A. So let's write it down. This is our question. So obviously we'll start with the left hand side. And in our left hand side, we can see that sine A is common. So inside the bracket, sine A is out. So one minus two sine square A. And this is cos A common here. So cos A common and 2 cos square A minus 1. Now can you see already you can see sin A upon cos A which means tan A is already here. That means these two brackets over here they must be equal. Now what I'm going to do is not touch this bracket but here in the denominator this cos square we will write as sin square. We know that sin square A plus cos square A is equal to 1. So cos square becomes 1 minus sin square. So we write this cos A as it is, 2 as it is and inside the bracket in place of cos square we will write 1 minus sin square. And this minus 1 as it is. Open the bracket in the denominator. So this remains the same. Your cos A will be 2 minus 2 into sin square that is 2 sin square A minus 1. And then numerator is just the same. I copy and then cos A here 2 minus 1 is 1 minus 2 sin square A. And you can see that this bracket is getting cancelled, leaving sin A upon cos A, which is tan A. Now, what is tan A? That is your right hand side. And so we say, can prove this one over here and this one getting the answer right. That will be giving you your two marks. Question 5, third part. The line PQ intersects Y axis as shown here. Find the slope of the line. Now we have this 45 degrees. That is the inclination of the line. Write the equation of the line and then find the coordinates of Q. I have drawn the diagram here exactly the same way because inclination, this is theta given to us. So slope of PQ will be slope of PQ will be tan of 45. That is the tan of the inclination which is 1 and that's our answer A and this will be our first mark. Now we want equation of PQ. We already know the slope. Do you know which point is PQ passing through? That's right from here. So it passes through this point. So we'll use slope point form. We write the slope point form. What is the slope point form? Speak with me. Y minus Y1 equal to M into bracket X minus X1. Okay. So y minus 3 will be equal to n means 1 and here it will be x minus 4. So when you open the bracket, you will get this. Take everything one side, so x should be positive, okay? y will be minus y here, minus 4 here, this minus 3 goes that side, it becomes plus. And then we have equation of pq is x minus y and here we get minus 1, that's equal to 0. And that will be a second mark. Now we need coordinates of Q. Now Q is lying on Y axis, so it is going to be equal to zero comma Y, right? So we write just that. Q lies on Y axis, so let Q equal to zero comma Y. And substitute X equal to this zero and Y equal to this Y in this equation, that is this one. And then you'll get X means zero minus Y minus one equal to zero. Take y that side, it becomes positive, minus 1 remains this side only. So y is equal to minus 1. So q is 0, comma 1 means 0, comma minus 1. And that gives us our third mark. So our three marks are easily scored. Now question number 4 is the graph question. You have to estimate the mole of this given distribution by plotting a histogram. So we have these marks. Can you see they are continuous distribution? So all we have to take is take appropriate scale and then get our mole from the histogram. So we have drawn the graph. You see the scale on both axes is 2 centimeters equal to 10 units. 
So we have shown this small kink here and these are 2 centimeters. So that is 10 to 20 and then we have here 30, 40, 50, 60 like so. And here we have from here to here 2 centimeters that is 10 units. Then again 2 centimeters that is 10 units. So that is 20, then 30, then 40, then 50. So this is our x axis, this is our y axis. Okay, now we take the ends away after plotting the histogram. Everyone knows how to plot the histogram, right? Then we take the top rectangle, we take this corner and we take this corner over here. We join these, we join these, and where the two intersect, that is going to give us our mode. And mode is 33.5 marks, and that's how we get our 3 marks. That finishes our question 5. Now we come to question number 6. So question number 6, first part. Two dice are thrown simultaneously. Find the probability of obtaining A, the sum of two numbers that turn up is 8, and B, the same number on both the dice. So as there are two dice, we will write the sample space like so, 1, 1, 1, 2, up to 1, 6. Then we start with 2, 2, 1, 2, 2 up to 2, 6 and we write all these in proper manner till 6, 6. So the total number of outcomes will be 6 here multiplied by 6 here that will be 36. Now our A part asked us probability of the sum of two numbers that turn up equal to 8 which means on the top of the first if there is 2 then the second die it should be 6. So that the sum will be a. So we can have 3 comma 5, the sum is a. 4 comma 4, you will have the sum as 8. 5 comma 3, so we reverse these and 6 comma 2 and that's how you'll get sum 8. So totally we have 5 outcomes. They are the favorable outcomes. Probability of any event is number of favorable outcomes upon total number of outcomes. That is 5 upon 36 and that is our answer 1. So we've done this properly, we will get our one mark and then we come to the second part that is B part, probability that the same number will be on both dice. So the favorable outcomes will be 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3, 4 comma 4, 5 comma 5 and 6 comma 6. These are also called as doublets. So number of favorable outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And total number of outcomes are, can you see this, 36. So we write that. And 6 1s and 6 6s. Six so 1 upon 6 is the probability. We write all the statements properly. We'll get our second mark as well. Question 6, the second part. Find the coordinates of the centroid of triangle ABC, where ABC, the vertices are given. I think they forgot to write triangle ABC. Anyway, let us see how we write it down. So we say, let A the x1 comma y1 b we write the coordinates x2 comma y2 and c 5 comma 1 we write the coordinates and we say that it is x3 comma y3 now centroid formula we know this formula by heart x1 plus x2 plus x3 upon 3 and y1 plus y2 plus y3 upon 3 okay substitute the values see these values we write them here upon 3 this gets cancelled we have 5 upon 3 and then for these, we will copy these and then we will have 3 upon 3, that is 1. So we have 5 upon 3 comma 1 and that is our centroid of the triangle. So for writing this properly and this properly, we will get our 1 mark here and 1 mark here and that's how we get our 2 marks. So let's come to the third subpart. There is a building of height 7 meter next to the cable tower of unknown height. From the top of the building, the angle of elevation of the top of the tower is 52. So we can see this one is the building and this is the tower and the angle of elevation is 52. So angle of elevation, we show the horizontal at A and the angle of depression of the foot of the tower from the same place. So we look up, we look at the top of the tower, we look down and we look at the foot of the tower. And this angle is 45 degrees. Find the height of the tower that is CD plus DE to the nearest meter. We have drawn the diagram. 
So we have this is the building and this is the tower. And the height of the tower will be from here till here. Okay. Now we know that the height of the building is 7 meter. Now this one A, B, E, D is a rectangle. So this will be equal to this and this will be equal to this. So I have written just that because opposite sides of rectangle are equal. Now our job is to find out this CE. So CE plus DE will be our CE. So let us look at our um, DE. Our DE is already 7 meter. But in order to find CE, we need to find AD. So for that, we will use this triangle. And in this, we will take tan 45. That will be 7 upon AD. So can you see tan 45 is DE upon AD. We substitute the values. Tan 45 is 1. D is 7. And AD as it is cross multiply. AD will come out to be 7 meter. So this over here from D to E, this is 7 meter. Now we have to go to this triangle, this one. This is going to help us to find CD because AD is coming out to be 7 meter already. So we can use this AD and this CD can be found out using tan of 52. So in write a triangle ABC, tan 52 will be CD upon AD, tan 52, look at the tan table and get the value CD upon AD which is 7 and so cd will be equal to cross multiply 7 multiplied by this that gives us this as the value of cd the height of the tower is going to be this cd plus de so that is this plus the 7 that comes out to 15.9593 meter and we need it to the nearest meter the next digit over here after 5 is 9 so this pi becomes 6 and that becomes 16 meter and that is our answer of CD. So to get our AD as 7, we will get our 1 mark. To get our CD, we will get our 1 mark. And to get this, that will give us the third mark. So that's how we get our 3 on 3 for this question. Let's come to the last question. The last question, find the value of the unknown frequency if the mean of the following distribution is 54. Now, the class intervals are given, frequency has been given, so we need to make the tables. Let us draw the table. So the table is drawn, mean is written as 54. We have written the values here of the class interval and the frequency. X will be the mid value of this. So 0 plus 20 upon 2, that is 10. Then 20 plus 40 upon 2, that will be 30. 50 here, 70 here, 90. And simply multiply f and x, so you get your fx. 7 into 10, 70. p into 30, 30 p. 10 into 50, 500. 9 into 70, 630. 13 into 90 is 1170. And we have to find the mean, the formula is sigma fx upon sigma f. Now sigma f will be p plus add this, it will give us 39. And fx, if we add all those values, sigma fx will be 30p plus 2370. Now we write the formula sigma fx upon sigma f. Now remember always to write the formula then substitute. So mean is 54, we write this value here, sigma fx we substitute, sigma f we substitute this value and then we cross multiply. So we have 54 multiplied by this, 54 plus 54 and 39 multiplied gets this. This remains as it is on the right hand side. Now let us take 30p this side. So 54p minus 30p will be 2370 minus 2106. And so 24p will be equal to 264 and p will be equal to 264 upon 24. So you see 24 ones and 24 ones, 24 again remain 2 and again 24 goes once. So you get 11 as the value of p. This is the value of p and that's our answer. Now to get this and to get this we will have one mark and one mark and then 
to complete all his calculation correctly, that will be another mark. So that is how we got our three marks out of three marks for this question. And this was the last question. So with this, we have finished with the entire paper. I hope you have understood what precautions to take, how to think during the examination, how to write the steps, how to connect the known with unknown quantities. And I hope that all of you will be exceedingly well for your examination. All the best to you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Bye.